Okay, I'm uh, Yuni. Uh, I'm a recently uh, appointed product manager of the CBAT series um, with Teledyne Reson. And I'm uh, here to show you and, um, a little bit about the T-series. I would end up with the T-series, but I'll start um, with a, a, a walk down memory lane um, to, to kind of give you an impression of what, what, what took us to where we are now. The, um, the first really uh, commercial uh, sonars that we made was in the early 90s, and that was a, primarily a forward looker. The first one was the, or one of the first ones was the 6012, the CBAT 6012. The CBAT 6012. Imaging only, uh, an imaging sonar only, and you'll recognize uh, the, the um, you'll recognize the, the, the uh, Wedge display that we uh, that um, Simon just uh, showed you, just in a much lower resolution. Uh, but that's a little bit like the Commodore 64. Uh, it was good then. Uh, starting in Commodore 64 today probably wouldn't be as good. Um, we only had a 90 degree swath uh, coverage, and uh, it was even uh, offered with a color display. That was one of the marketing uh, uh, things back then in the early 90s. Um, Simon showed you a diver. This is what a diver looked uh, like at the, on the 6012. So quite a few years ago, uh, you could uh, buy an optional VHA, VHS output from that sonar. So that's uh, back in the good old days. We're moving a little bit forward, um, and this is one of the f this is the first uh, very uh, successful uh, bathymetry sonar by from from that was Reson back then, the Teledyne Reson. But you know what I mean. We are still in the early 90s, a shallow water sonar. Um, again, only 90 degree um, swath coverage. You will recognize the. Oh, no, that's right. Sorry, you won't recognize because I didn't have a picture of the 6012. But the physical uh, dimensions of the, the uh, 19, uh, 9, 9001 are very similar to the, the 6012. Uh, we were up at a ping rate of 15 pings per second giving us uh, about 900 soundings per second, which by then was fantastic. And the funny thing is, uh, this is a pipe and a uh, rocky outcrop and outcrops next to the pipe. The funny thing is that I only a few months ago, I visited a customer in Poland who showed me his 9001. And he was very happy with that, with its performance. So that was, that was um, just, um, it's probably one of the few still in operation. We, um, we then move up in the mid to late 90s, and that way it starts to take off, uh, for really take off for Reson, and we, have, we end up producing a lot of sonars and become very, very, very su successful. Um, everybody in the, 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 the hydrographic industry will know 80, the numbers 8101 and 8125. If you don't know that, uh, well, you will. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the 8101 and the 8125. These are the two, um, probably the two most successful sonars from, well, it is the two most successful sonars from, the, from, that, uh, from that era. We also had, uh, this was also a, a time where we expanded our product line uh, from not only shallow water uh, stuff, but also into going into deeper waters, uh, producing an 8111, uh, going down to about 1,000 meters, uh, an 8160, going down to about 3,000 meters, and our first, um, our first deep water system, the 8150, uh, that, that provided full ocean depth uh, performance. So this is a, in our car park or parking lot, as you would call it over here, um, a six by six-ish meter uh, sonar array uh, before, before we ship it. I'll, I'll focus a little bit on the 8101 and the 8125, because that's the two um, really interesting products uh, from that from that time. The 8101, uh, which also happens to be the first sonar I put my hands on when I when I started in the hydrographic um, with the Danish hydrographic service, um, and that specifically that sonar they still have that and they still operate it as an 8101, and that's 15, 16 years ago, and they had had it for a couple of years when I joined them. Uh, so that's quite impressive. That's a sonar that they is closing up on 20 years in, in daily operations. That, that's quite good. We uh, had about 900 soundings before per second, now we are up to about 4,000. 
8101. This is also where we, uh, compared to the 9000 series, this is where we start to see really pretty uh, pictures of, of good data sets. Uh, probably also because computers, they start to have the, the computing power to, to, uh, to handle the data. And some of these pictures, I stole them from the internet, so if anyone from NOAA is around, uh, I'm sorry, I hope it's right. Um, 8125, also a sonar that uh, is hugely, hugely popular, popular uh, was and is, and we, have, we still have uh, custom, customers using the 8125, uh, and we even sell an 8125 every now and then. Uh, and that, that's something that was introduced in the mid to late 90s. Uh, the uh, 8125 uh, had increased uh, computing power, uh, computer power, so now we could, we, we cranked up to 240 beams. Um, with, a, with a ping rate of 40, 40 pings per second, uh, up to 40 pings per second. So now we're up to 9,000 soundings per second. So we're getting, getting closer to what we see uh, today. 8125. This is, um, these are a few images are from uh, some of the uh, images here from ADIS um, that does uh, really, really fantastic, uh, n not only surveys, but also uh, imaging of the survey. They have they have their own in-house software to present really pretty pictures uh, of of sonar data. This is 8125, a later version of the 8125 data, but still the 8125 sonar head. And we should definitely do something about the lightning uh, lights. In here. Okay, so 6K series, 9K, 8K. Don't ask questions about that, but. That's the way it is. And now that, that moved to, we, we are moving into the, uh, we call it the 2000s, the, the zeros, um, and we start to see the 7K series uh, with the 7125 in about 2005. The 7125, not only um, is a completely different platform, the 7K series is a completely different platform. Uh, there were similarities between the 9000 and the 8000 series, but the 7K is, is completely different. It also gives us a new user interface um, so, com and compared to the, the user interface we saw on the 8, uh, 8K series, it, it, it's vastly improved. Um, usability and, and details you can see, uh, both sonar performance has increased, of course, but the, the user interface face has increased tremendously as well. Before I go back to the 7125, uh, I'll just mention uh, so, some of the other sonars. Uh, the 7160 is the same as the 8160. Except it's not the same because the entire top side has, has changed, and we have um, upgraded all the, the uh, all the data processing um, top side. Um, and the same 160 we 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 still have have in our uh, product uh, in our product line. 8150 becomes a 7150, and the reason it becomes 7150, also the 7160, is uh, to to improve data processing, but also to to Im introduce features uh, that we can work with in software more than an embedded solution uh, that is, it is what it is. This is also with the, with the uh, 7K series and is also where we start going into to bigger installations, uh, not only bigger as in bigger sonars, but in more complex installations with other sensors and more sonars and external sensors. This is uh, data collected by yours truly in 2006. 7150. All right, let's get back to the 7125 a little bit because that's the uh, that is, has been our high runner for for many years by now. Um, we we now are, we are up to uh, we opt again from 240 beams to 512, and that has become kind of the industry standard. That 512 that that's what many customers they will request. Uh, and at least it was we will provide them. They can, they can take off half of them if they want to. But anyway, and we uh, we are up to 50 pings per second. That suddenly we are, that ups our uh, maximum number of soundings to about 25,000. Uh, still in, in a single head version. The 7125 has uh, we've had that in, in a couple of different iterations. Uh, that one was the first iteration. Uh, we have a the 7125 SV as the second iteration. And with the SV, we introduce feature packs. Uh, and feature packs uh, starts to make a big difference for us. 
because a sonar can only be so good, at least back then, uh, can only be so good. So we, we were looking at, at other ways of improving uh, the usability for the customers. And that, be, that uh, becomes our feature packs. With the 7125, we also see um, data, data quality that, that probably no one ever, ever had seen before. Um, really high uh, quality data and really um, clean data. Not as clean as the T50, but we'll get back to that. Again, a, an, an image from ADIS. So, a long list of feature packs, or not feature packs, but feature packs gave us a long list of features. Some of them are, uh, we had a feature pack one that introduced a, a certain number of features, a feature pack two gave us something else and, or something more, feature pack three, and, and we're, with the 7125, we are, we had feature pack four by now. Um, I'm not going to show you all these, uh, all these features or discuss uh, all these features, but I'm going to, to mention a couple of them, and that is uh, multi-detect flex mode and pipe detection and tracking. That is um, something that would be impossible with the 8K series, because it takes, it takes place in our, um, in our 7K software that runs on the 7K systems only. It also, especially for multi takes would require a, a, a really clean data, a, a, a good sonar. You cannot take a, a low quality sonar or low performance sonar and try to run multi take because you'll just get noise. So you do, you do need a good sonar. Flex mode is uh, something that, in, especially in the offshore industry, is, is widely accepted as uh, being a, a way of uh, improving your data density or increasing your data density on your very specific, uh, in a very specific area on very specific uh, targets. And I'll show you that uh, um, in real time in a minute. Or, well, in real time, I mean, in a play reprocess, uh, reprocessing in a minute. Oops. Yeah. 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 If I'm a slogger, Simon, I'll just start this again and oh, here we go. All right. This take us this. Um, so with the sim, we ended up with the seven one twenty five. In its latest iteration, uh, really high data density, really high data output, um, and the next natural step will be a new generation sonar, and this is where the T-series comes into play. I'll get back to the features and I'll show those in, in, uh, in, in real time, but I'll just uh, touch on the T-series first. Um, Simon, oh, sorry, Tim already uh, mentioned them um, a little bit, and I'll some of it maybe uh, repeat it, but anyway. So, we have the T20. Um, we decided to, on the T-series as the, a T, uh, the T-series, we, well, let me go back. Discussions were, what number can we use now for a sonar? We, we used up the 8,000, we used up the 7,000, we used up the 9,000 and the 6,000, oh, where do we go? And we ended up going somewhere completely different. And um, all our sonars are, uh, is, is a Mills cross configuration, a T-shaped configuration, so it ended up being a, a T-series. And this will be our future platform. Um, so instead of numbers, we have a T-series. We also have numbers, but we have a T-series. Started out with the, same one uh, sorry, with the uh, T-20, both in the single head and later in dual head. We run it in full rate dual head, uh, with me, which means that both sonars ping at the same time, and with uh, chirping differently, with, with with, with uh, one sonar chirping up, the other one chirp, chirping down, um, slightly frequency offset, we can ping and distinguish the two sonars by, from, from each other and ping at the same time. That gives us 1,024 beams every time we ping. Um, the um, PSP, or the, and it's not a PlayStation portable, it's the portable sonar processor. Uh, the PSP uh, is designed uh, to be ruggedized, reliable, Water, type, uh, water resistant, uh, and that applies both for the, the, uh, the T20 and now for the T50. It's physically exactly the same uh, PSP, and we will see 
that uh, a customer can just take a Sona hat, plug it into a PSP, and it will reconfigure itself to whatever Sona he connects. Not this week and next week, but we will see that. That is that is in, in our on our list of to do. Um, we have the, all the, the, the both the T20 and the T50 are uh, delivered with this uh, shiny uh, Etronax bracket uh, bracket that weighs probably about 800 900 grams. That would be two pounds ish, three maybe. Very very lightweight, but still uh, f completely uh, solid and, and sturdy. We uh, we have a dual head bracket, both for the T20 and for the T50 in the, in the same material, um, and it ends up and we've we've done that. Um, even even I can lift a dual head T20 in one hand uh, out of water. So that's definitely definitely portable. With um, with the later versions of the 7125 and now with the T-Series, we also introduced a new user interface. This is the old user interface. Uh, traditional uh, uh, wedge display with, a, with one ping only. Um, with our uh, Sonar user interface, Telline Sonar user interface, uh, we introduce configurability so the user can decide what to, what to display to himself. And that could be wedge display, which would be the obvious one, uh, snippet, uh, sort of side scan snippets, and also a water column display. Um, the user interface is the same user interface for the T20, for the 7125, for the T50, um, and, and we just the user interface just picks up data from the sonar and displays it. Runs off. Uh, I have done numerous uh, demonstrations just of my laptop. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by ruggedized. Because how do you test if a, a product is is ruggedized? Uh, and this is not this may not be the most um, scientific way of doing it, and it's not the only way we've done it. But I'll show you um, that it can take it can definitely take a splash. It is IP54 rated, and it's not our water hose that. That, that test that, that is the base of that uh, rating. It, that's a company, external company that does the, does that rating. But it can also take a hit. It can also take a hit, and I'll like I'll show you a um, a small video from our R and D department <laughs> where we have a PSP up here, one meter and ninety eight. That would be six foot something. Um, and and um, we we end up actually. Yeah, well, you see. Well, I, I don't have sound on my laptop now, but it, it sounds really, I mean, you can see on the, that's uh, Rene. Um, it almost hurts for him seeing, a, I don't know, a 20,000, 30,000 pound or dollar piece of equipment falling down two meters. It works afterwards. We do not recommend customers to do that, <laughs> but it and it did make a, a mark in our carpet in our R&D department. But it does work afterwards. Um, as Tim mentioned, data quality has been one of our highest priorities with the T50, and fortunately, uh, well, uh, that was basically based on uh, the uh, the user. Uh, the user feedback, the request from users. We we want to we have we want better data so we can save time uh, on our processing, and that's exactly the feedback we have gotten from uh, one of our basically two of our beta customers, um, Port of Sydney and Port of Hamburg, um, that they they love it because they they have they have less time uh, processing data, and that's um, why we we, we uh, say that this sonar will give you your survey deliverables in a shorter time. Uh, I have a couple of um, images. This is the, the uh, user interface, just like I showed you before, just now in a different configuration because we have a 3D or waterfall kind of display. Uh, so you immediately, uh, in real time, see, um, get an impression of what the seabed looks like. And next to that, we have our normalized backscatter display. Um, backscatter has traditionally been a, in a, in a challenge, um, and you, many customers will have, will have run their surveys with fixed sonar settings. To, um, to avoid changes in, in return from the seafloor. Uh, 
But with normalized backscatter, we compensate for all sonar settings, um, and we now we can now allow ourselves to to um, to run the sonar with both uh, good bathymetry and good backscatter. I'll show you another couple of pictures. Um, these are from a couple of weeks ago in Plymouth uh, during demos in a shallow survey. That's outside Plymouth, uh, just a, a wreck. It's a little bit of a shame because it looks really, really nice on my laptop. Okay, shallow survey just briefly. Um, shallow survey uh, is this conference that takes place every three years and and uh, all manufacturers are invited to collect a data set uh, at the well predefined area. Um, I'll leave that. In a predefined area, um, and in this year, well, actually last year, in August last year, they had put out or had uh, targets on the seafloor that they had uh, told us to, to, to do specific target lines. Uh, obviously, uh, to, to, to compare the sonars, target, capa target detection capabilities between the sonars. Um, we did not have the T50 available at that time, unfortunately. Um, that said, both the, T the, both the T20 and the 7125 performed really, really well at Shallow Survey. But what they, everybody talked about, UKHO, who did the uh, comparison presentation, they talked about a horizontal bar on top of, on top of a scaffolding uh, somewhere in Plymouth Sound. Um, and several of our competitors, none mentioned, none forgotten, did not detect that, uh, that top bar. Um, and we did with the C20 and both the 7125. We were just totally excited and when we, in real time, without doing any processing, could see that top bar uh, from the T50 in real time. So we know it's there. So that we, we just, yeah, we're just all excited. Another couple of pictures, um, breakwater. This is, I'm not going to try to, I'm not trying to tell you this is unedited data, but it's almost unedited. I think we collected data for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, um, took the data into PDS, I spent seven, eight, nine minutes, just taking out the worst outliers, that's it. And this is point cloud data. So it, I mean, it, we, we see really, really clean data. So that takes us back to, to the start, where we started and where we are now. So this is where we started uh, some 25 years ago, um, with a diver being a, a blob somewhere. Um, and this, is, this should be fish. This should also be a small fish, and this should be a, a whale. <laughs> and it probably is. Um, to where we are today, with very, very clean data, uh, high, highly um, reliable data, and highly repeatable data. So that was then, this is now, and I'm not, I'm not going to, to reveal too much about the future, but what we, our impression is, and what we, it, look, we, it looks bright. We will, it, lo it looks good. We, we are, oh, it does. Ah. Hmm, good, okay. The future looks good. We, we, are, we are very satisfied. We are very uh, confident in our products, and uh, we're looking forward to, to supporting, well, the entire holographic and commercial community for, for many years.